Welcome everyone to browser extensions and Tim is going to show us everything we need to know and more. Or less, depending on your desire for knowledge, but we do have a limited amount of time. Mm -hmm. um, as always, if Mary has your information, so if she has your email address, then she will send you a link to both the slides, which in this case are fairly sparse, uh, but she will also share with you the video of what we talk about today. If anyone has any questions, feel free to type them in the Zoom chat. And we will also stop periodically to ask if anyone has any questions. At the end, there will be a rather substantial amount of time to ask questions. And if after this is done, because um, that's when I have my best questions about 10 minutes after I'm able to ask them, feel free to email Mary. And we can also, we will update the slides if there's any information that we feel everyone should know uh, that's brought up in a question. Great. So that's pretty much the same spiel we give every class, mm -hmm. uh, but we're gonna go over browser extensions today. So browser extensions are essentially things you can add on to your browser. So some extensions you may be familiar with slash may have annoyed you in the past would be things like Flash, which you should no longer need, and um, Adobe. So Adobe will want to, anytime you see a PDF, it will say like, hey, do you want to add the Adobe PDF browser extension? From there, you can click OK and add it or not. Most browsers are able to manage PDFs on their own now. For the purpose of this demonstration, we will be using the Brave browser. I do this partially because I personally use all the other browsers rather extensively. So I don't wanna kind of use a browser that I constantly am using because it will give autofill. It will you know, already have extensions. It will already have all these different things that kind of um, make it so it's you're not able to focus on what we're talking about as easily. If you want Brave, it is available uh, and it is free. It's essentially based on Firefox and Chrome. So extensions will work in Brave and it actually uses the Chrome Web Store. So any extensions that are available on Chrome will be available on Brave. Uh, personally, sometimes people ask, I like Firefox. Um, so that's the one I primarily use. And just a note, with Safari, not all of these extensions will be available on Safari, um, but you are able to get Firefox on your Mac. So if you feel like you need one of these extensions or would like to use an extension and it's not available on Safari, you can definitely download and use Firefox for extensions for added functionality. Before we go into different types of extensions and ones that I personally use, we're just going to talk about safety for a little bit. Now, whenever people come on Wednesdays, uh, noon to one, and ask questions, occasionally some of those questions are about what people feel is a virus on their Mac. Um, this also happens on Windows computers, but it's a little bit more rare for something like this to occur on your Mac. And oftentimes what it is is an extension that was installed. Now, sometimes when you see a pop-up on a website and it'll say like, hey, you need to install this plugin to view this content, that would install an extension. And sometimes those extensions are things that you do not want. So we're gonna go over some of the issues with extensions uh, just to scare you off of using them in the first place before we go in and tell you some extensions that would be useful or interesting for you to use. Uh, that was rather flippant. I do feel extensions as a whole are very positive, and if you need it, you should definitely use it. Just be careful and make sure you're only installing extensions that are well-reviewed and from legitimate sources. So the first bullet point is third-party websites. If a third-party website wants you to install an extension, I generally recommend you not install that extension. So what do I mean by third-party websites? Uh, so Firefox has a dedicated store, quote unquote, for extensions, and the same thing with Chrome, the same thing with Safari. So if you're installing extensions from the browser's web store, 
you're essentially good. There is a process that extensions have to go through to get approved. And that does include some, you know, testing to make sure they're not malicious. Uh, but if you install it from a third party website, you don't get any of that testing or security. The next thing is adware. So an extension can be not malicious, but still be kind of malicious. So what I mean by that is sometimes you'll install a extension to give you like a deal on something or to enhance your search ability. And what those extensions will do to monetize it is they will often show you ads um, for the products that people pay them to, to kind of promote. So it'll do things like it'll give you pop-ups. Um, these are also the ones that are can be kind of malicious where you'll get a pop-up and it will say like Windows has detected that you have 37,000 viruses. Uh, do not close this window. Click this button and call our support to fix the issue. Um, whenever you see a message like that, sometimes it's because the website itself is trying to essentially get you to give them your credit card information. And sometimes it can be an extension that was installed. We'll go over how to see what extensions you have installed and how to get rid of them. Another thing is selling data. So one thing you have to think about is anytime something is free, generally people need to, unless they're truly altruistic, people generally need to monetize it. And extensions are very hard to monetize. So one of the things that they will sell is your data. Um, and this is kind of a known necessary evil because things like honey, um, it will provide you with deals and it's good that it gives you a percent off of your purchases or it'll find you know the right coupons to apply when you're shopping online. The negative is now honey knows what you shopped for and it can sell that information for advertisers to make a more targeted profile whenever they're trying to advertise for you. On the positive side or negative side, depending on how you look at it, for example, the example I like to bring up is beds. Uh, a couple of years ago, I was searching for a new bed uh, because I realized that I was an adult. And for a while afterwards, I got ads specifically targeted to you know sheets, pillows, bed frames, beds. So on the negative, it's bad because it knew exactly what I was searching for. On the positive side, I stopped getting ads for like Ugg boots, you know, things that I would never actually be interested in. Um, the next thing is similar to selling data and that's data collection. They're just collecting data on you. Some, uh, some extensions do this more than others and some, you know, collect the data for good reasons because some extensions kind of need to know what you're doing in order to help you. And we'll go over that in a little bit. Uh, search redirection is kind of synonymous or part of the second bullet point of adware. What this will do is you type in a search in Google and you realize the results are not given by Google. What that is, is a search redirection. Now, one of the reasons this is used is because if someone gets more clicks on their page, their algorithm will go up and Google will display them more prominently. So sometimes search redirection is benign in that it just wants to get more clicks. Sometimes it's nefarious where it'll actually give you the wrong information or it'll direct you to the wrong website. Now, one of the main reasons why some privacy experts uh, kind of make the sign of the cross whenever they talk about browser extensions is it has access to everything. So if you remember on your phone or if you remember in the news a while ago where Apple changed their policy to any app from the app store had to tell you exactly what it was looking at or what permissions it needed in order to function. Um, browser extensions have a similar thing, but the problem is pretty much any browser extension that you want to be useful will need to have access to the page you're viewing and what and the information that's stored on that page. And with those two things, that basically means everything you look for online or every website you visit online, the browser has access to that. 
Um, so it's kind of like the bare minimum because it needs it to interact with the web pages and do its thing, but it's also kind of the maximum amount of information that you would want to allow anyway. So you can look at what apps or what extensions um, at what they need, what their permissions are that they need to run. But oftentimes it's kind of like all of them need access to everything anyway. So it's hard to tell if something's being nefarious or not. The last point is probably my favorite one, which is extensions, as I said earlier, are not that easy to monetize. And what this means is sometimes people will do this as a pet project and not really expect to make money and they develop it for you know one two year, one two or three years and then they kind of okay i got my experience i'm going to move on from here and then what do they do with that extension well a company can come in and say hey you have a user base of a couple hundred thousand we will buy this extension from you for money since you're not doing anything with it anymore so sometimes an app can be perfect in every single way but then be bought by someone who has less than pure intentions of what to do with the user base that already has this app installed. Um, this occasionally happens with kind of ad blockers where a company will buy an ad blocker that's not really being updated anymore and they will make it so that it still works, but all of their ads in their network are let through. So it kind of loses the functionality that was intended. All right. So Brilliant. that only took 13 or so minutes. And those are some of the negatives. Just wanted to get that out of the way. <laughs> That's brilliant. Um, are there any questions about like some questions or issues people may have with the idea of extensions? I realize I'll keep talking for about a minute while people prepare their questions. But I, I realize that it may seem weird that we're doing a class on, hey, browser extensions are awesome. And then we start off with all the negatives. But I just want to make sure people are aware that it's not, you know, you can't be willy nilly and just install every extension under the sun. You kind of want to be selective and make sure you know what you're installing. Right. And it's doing what you want it to do. I think that uh, TV ads for a prescription should start with all their disclaimers first, too. <laughs> so. Oh yeah, and that person who talks really, really fast, but legally yeah. just slow enough. Yep. Right. That was it was very entertaining, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> so does anyone have any questions for Tim? Okay. Well, I guarantee people will have questions on how to do stuff, which is what we're going to go into next. Okay. So here are a smattering of browser extensions. Um, and some of these will be useful for some people. Some of them will not. Awesome screenshot. I feel like I don't need to explain what it does. Um, it allows you to take screenshots. Uh, Bitwarden is if you've been in any of the privacy or password management classes, uh, occasionally we'll bring up password managers and Bitwarden is the free one that I don't necessarily recommend, but it is the one I would use if I wasn't already using one. Uh, currently is kind of, if you remember sometimes in older browsers, whenever you opened up a new tab, it would give you information like the weather. Um, currently and Momentum are browser extensions that allow you to kind of customize what you see when you open up a new tab. Uh, Google Translate, uh, this is kind of already built into Chrome, but basically if you're visiting websites that may not be in your preferred language, uh, Google Translate can come on in and just change the entire site to English or whatever language you want to. Uh, Grammarly, you have probably seen an ad about Grammarly by now, but basically what it does is if you're typing something, Grammarly will one, spell check it. Uh, I do find the spell check to be slightly better than average. And it will also kind of think and recognize your tone uh, make sure you're not making too many I statements, making sure you're not using like wishy-washy language. So it'll kind of give you a more holistic view of what, you know, the tone of your, uh, of whatever you're writing is. This is also useful for like, if you're writing papers or news articles or anything like that, they can kind of look through and make sure you're 
not, you know, using extraneous words like I just did. Um, Honey is a program or is an extension that essentially, if you remember in the newspaper or in a magazine, you would get coupons and then you would bring them into the grocery store and you'd get, you know, Campbell's tomato soup for half off. Um, Honey kind of is an online repository of coupons. And whenever you go out and check out from like a major retailer, you know, like Target, Best Buy, Amazon, uh, it will say, hey, do you want us to try all these coupons? And sometimes you'll get a lot off. Sometimes you won't, but it's kind of just interesting to have because occasionally it will, it will save you money. Ublock Origin is my preferred uh, ad blocker. Um, and we'll go over how to look at reviews of applications. But one of the reasons I like uBlock Origin uh, is that it has a low footprint, so it doesn't take up that many resources. And most of the negative comments you see about it is it's too good at blocking stuff, where you need to disable part of it for some websites because it blocks too much, uh, which I view as better than something that doesn't block enough. And then the last one uh, for anyone who is in marketing or online, kind of anything, websites, uh, what font is interesting because it will tell you what exactly the font is you're looking at. There are also ones for, you know, if you want to see what color something is because you want to have that color, uh, you can do that. There are also extensions for, you know, saving news articles. I think Mary did a class on that. Mm -hmm. But th whatever you can think of, there's probably an extension for it. So if you think something would be useful, you can search for it and see if you can use it in your everyday life. All right, so that was the spiel. So we're gonna go over kind of one, how to tell what extensions you have, and two, how to install extensions, how to use them, and of course, how to remove them. Great. So I have these open, but I will close them. So open a new tab. Uh, generally, you will go, this is the same on Firefox and Chrome or very, very similar verbiage. Uh, you'll go to the top right where all the fun stuff is set up. So uh, if you notice, there's a little puzzle piece icon. Uh, this is my extensions. So because I have extensions, this pops up. If you don't have that, you would go to the little hamburger, so the three lines, and you would go down and find where it says extensions and click on it. Now you can see what extensions I have installed. I'll make this bigger. There we go. Uh, you can see I have a couple extensions. So I have application launcher for drive, but if you notice, it's not checked. So I have it installed, but I'm not actually using it. The next one is Bitwarden. I have it and it's checked, so I'm using it. Fake Spot, I have it checked, so I'm using it. And Honey, so I'm using it. Now, if you remember earlier, I was talking about permissions. If I go to details, I can see all this information about it and I can see what the permissions are for it. So of course, site access, this allows or allows this extension to read and change all of your data on websites you visit. This is kind of the base one I was talking about where it gives them access to everything, but it's kind of what all extensions need. So it's it's useful and interesting to see, but if you look at all these websites or all these extensions, it will have all of these for site access. So it's useful, but not that useful. Mm -hmm. um, another thing you can see is I can see where it was installed from, the web extension store. So if you're not sure about, if you go here on your computer and you're not sure where a extension came from, make sure it says web extension store so you know it's the correct place to get them. Uh, yeah. The last thing you can do in this 
is you can hit remove extension. So that's for if an extension you have on your computer that you're one, not sure why you have it, you're not sure where you got it, or you just want to remove it because you're not using it anymore. You can just hit the remove button. It will ask if you want to remove it. It will also ask if you're removing it because it's doing something that it's not supposed to. And you just hit remove. Of course, after you do that, a little website will pop up or a little page will pop up asking like, hey, why did you leave? We want to be better. Um, you can feel free to answer this or you can just close it. So you can now see I no longer have that extension on my computer or in this browser. All right, so that's how you see what extensions you have and how to remove them. Let's talk about how to install extensions. Here, extensions, same website. If I want to install extensions, there's a couple ways of doing it. One way is to just search. Uh, and this, if you just search like using Google, you know, um, good, good extensions to use, best Google Chrome extensions of 2021. Um, you can kind of find them this way, but as I was saying earlier, you definitely want to make sure that you are getting them from the web store. So if you make sure you click on the web store, it will send you directly to the Chrome web store if you're using Chrome or Brave, and it will allow you to search the store for extensions. On the main page, of course, there's going to be information, and it will kind of give you recommendations um, it thinks would be useful for you. Um, it will also, you know, potentially be ads in some web stores, but Google doesn't do that. Um, and you can also see a couple bits of information about it really, really quickly. So I can see that Grammarly has 40,013 reviews and an average of 4.6 out of five. So that seems pretty good. So those that review to star ratio means that one, a lot of people use it, and two, that it's well regarded. And you can see once you click into it, that it has over 10 million users. Generally, you can trust extensions with more users because more people would kind of uh, find out about it and post negative reviews if it's not doing what it's supposed to. Now, once you click on an extension you think you may want, uh, the first thing you'll see is the overview. This is a kind of quick synopsis of what this uh, extension can do for you. And it just allows you to, you know, see nice images of what it looks like. The next thing is privacy practices. This will kind of be a more overall look at what it can take and store from what you're, what you're doing. Um, and you can click on these to kind of get a little bit more information. So as I said earlier, extensions basically get all the information from you, um, but you kind of can think about it. So Grammarly, what does it do? Well, it needs to look at what I'm typing so it can edit. So a lot of these make sense. I'm not really sure why location would be needed, but that's not enough to make me not want to get it. You know, but if, if something says keystroke logging and it's not supposed to be watching you type, you may want to be a little bit wary of it. So how do I install it? I would just click the button, add to Brave. If you're in a different browser, it would say add to Firefox, add to Chrome, add to Safari. Click checking and add extension. After a brief period of time, it will install the extension. You can see in the top right-hand corner, it says quickly, it said that um, Grammarly had been added to Brave. And then it also gives me the option to remove from Brave. Now, if I go back to my extensions, um, I don't need to refresh, but I will anyway. Now I see that I have Grammarly installed and it's turned on. So Tim, it gave you the it. option to set up a, an account with Grammarly. Do you need to do that? Uh, so for Grammarly specifically, you don't need to. 
-hmm. but if you plan on doing a lot of writing, uh, so one of the reasons why you can trust quote unquote Grammarly is it offers the free version as kind of a gateway drug to get you to buy the okay. subscription for it. So it is making money um, and it gives you, you know, the basic functionality. So it is useful, the free version, but if you do any heavy writing or anything like that, the fuller version kind of gives you more options. So it's kind of like use Grammarly, see if you like it, if it's very valuable to your workflow, then you can pay for it and kind of get sure. the more um, aspect of it where it okay. does a lot more analytics for you. Tim, this is Kath. How expensive is it? Um, Ah, it's hiding its price. Yeah, right. Grammarly Premium. There we go. It may actually want me to have a whoops a thing first. Okay. Grammarly pricing plans. Here we go. Oh, doesn't want to tell me. <laughs> I love it. There we go. Oh, okay. So eleven sixty six a month. Um, and since we're going over Grammarly a little bit. We'll just kind of go over what the main differences are that I've found. So my wife has it. Um, I just use the free version. So grammar, spelling, and punctuation, the free version has it, but it'll give you consistency for the paid version and fluency. So it'll kind of tell you more about your sentence structure and try and fix it. So here you can see on the first section, you did July 10th, and then you did 25 AUG. So it wants to make it so that you have the same, you're using the same like tone and same, uh, just being more consistent. Engagement, um, this will give you kind of, make sure you don't use filler words and it will kind of act like a super thesaurus. So it's, it's interesting to see, um, it is impressive the difference between the the free and the paid, but if you're like me and you kind of just want to make sure you don't make really silly mistakes, uh, the free is good enough for me. But if you're writing a lot, I guess the paid version's worth it. As well, yes, <laughs> I also find though that um, it gives you to try to get you to buy the paid version. It will occasionally pop up and say this language is passive, or and to learn more, it will so that it, it's encouraging you to move up from free to the premium. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, it needs to give you a little bit, a little taste to right. kind of in, incentivize you. Right. Um, of course, I take personal front whenever it says I'm being passive, you know. Moi aussi. I know, right? Yeah. Uh, the other fun thing is plagiarism. So you know how, uh, I don't know if any of you are college professors or anything. I know we have a couple, but um, it just makes sure that you're not accidentally plagiarizing, which I find hilarious. But the other fun thing you can do is take someone else's work. If you're a teacher, uh, plug it into Grammarly and it will check a different database than colleges are provided with um, in order to check to make sure someone isn't just pulling off of Wikipedia. So yeah, it's fun. And it wow. is available on Safari. Interesting. I don't do that much writing though, so I just need to make sure I don't misspell Grammarly like I just did. <laughs> um, so yeah, Chrome Web Store, lots of options. Um, I mean, you have silly things like custom cursor, so you can you know have a paw print instead of the normal cursor. Uh, it's not for me, but you know you do you. Um, so we're going to go over one of the other browser extensions that I personally like, and that is Bitwarden. So we can see that one, I already have it added because of the little green banner. And I will click and see that it has over a million users. It has a rating of 4.8 out of five. 
that sounds pretty good. And I will quickly show you how I make sure, at a quick glance, make sure that um, a browser extension isn't nefarious. So the first thing, as we said before, is lots of people use it. More people use it, more people to check to make sure it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. Uh, it has a very high rating. And I will also look at the reviews. So oftentimes you'll see these are sorted by helpful. If there's a negative review and it's a legitimate negative review, a lot of people will mark it as helpful. So you'll be able to see them up here. Um, so I'm just scrolling through, I'm just seeing five stars. Here's a four star. Now it is, oh, last pass doubled in price. So someone tried Bitwarden and it's just as good, if not better. I'm not really sure why it's four stars if it's just as good, if not better, but whatever, you know, that's the four star we see, we're good. Okay. So we have someone give a legitimate concern that says the site can't provide a secure connection using unsupported protocol. And then we're going to look at people below to see if they explain why this is happening. Uh, this person is wrote a lot, so I'm going to trust them. Uh, issues not with Bitwarden, late to the party, your browser is not able to. OK, so I'm cool. I saw a negative review that raised an issue for me. And I saw people explaining why that was the case and why you shouldn't be worried. Can you trust everyone online? No. but. I trusted the three people who responded and this person makes, yep, yep, I'm just reading it. Yeah, so not a bit warden issue. So I feel pretty good. So I have it, I'm not gonna remove it, but we'll click on it. So if you notice that in the upper right hand corner, I have a couple icons. One, if I hover over it, and I apologize, I can't make that part of my screen bigger. This says honey. If I click on it, I can see that one, it's gray, which means it's not active on this site. So honey has realized on this site, it doesn't really have anything to do. So it's not being active. If I look at Bitwarden, I see that it's blue, which means it's active. If I click on it, it will ask me to log in. So I'm gonna to go to over here and grab my login for the correct Bitwarden this time. And copy paste. Dupe. So I can see that Bitwarden is active. If I click on it, I can see that there are no logins available to autofill for the current browser tab. So what this is basically telling me, if you're familiar with password managers, is I have no login on this site that Bitwarden has in its repository. So if I go to a website that I do have, let's make sure Amazon got that online shopping, I also have Macy's. So we're gonna to go to Macy's and see what happens. If I go to Macy's, I can see that the Bitwarden and Honey icons have changed. What does this mean? Well, Honey now is the color of Honey, I guess. And it has a little pop-up that says, hey, there are Macy's things that I have. So I can help you. So it'll give me like a little ad. That's the price of using Honey. And it wants me to activate, click on this to activate rewards. So one to 5% in Honey Gold is kind of like your credit card where you get, you know, 1% cash back on all purchases, 2% on gas stations and 3% on, you know, Amazon purchases or whatever. Uh, I can close that. But basically what this tells me is it's active. And when I go to checkout, it will ask me if I want to use Honey to apply coupons. The other thing I notice is Bitwarden is now blue and it has a one. So what that means is there is one login available for me on the site. If I click on this, I can see that Macy's, I have a account for it. 
And if I go to sign in, return a customer, if I click on Bitwarden, click on this, it will just auto fill my information. So in case you haven't seen any of the password management classes, the reason why this is really nice is one, I didn't type anything in. So if anything is logging my keystrokes like Grammarly, even though I trust Grammarly, um, Grammarly doesn't have access to my password because I didn't type it in. The other thing is that it's a lot faster than typing in my email address and password. So I click sign in. And apparently I have the wrong password saved in my Macy's. So let's pretend that worked. Okay. We'll go to Amazon and check. I remember there was some uh, oh, yes, kerfuffle I, last time. Yeah, absolutely. Sign in, Bitwarden, Amazon. Oh, good. I have two Amazon accounts. Uh, wow. I'm really not showcasing the uh, <laughs> how good this is, am I? All right. So there is, oh, I may have closed that account. Let's go back to Macy's. Sign in my account, email address, dupe. So in case anyone wonders if I mess up, yes, I do. It's normal. It's a human thing. It's all a learning process. I'm not a robot. Oh, God, traffic lights. Doop, 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 doop. There we go. This is a weird time to learn that I'm a robot. All right. So I now have a password security thing that's sent to me. At some point, I will get it. Sure. And I, I don't know if, Tim, while we're waiting, one of the other advantages of the password manager is that you don't have to remember your passwords. You can make them brilliantly difficult and not have to worry about it. Yes. The only issue with that is you then also need to make sure you update them properly, which I have not. Yes. So we're going to go and pretend like those things didn't happen. And we are going to sign up for a target account. Just to kind of show you if you do it right, it does work, I swear. So create account. Create password. So click on this. Uh, I will click on the add item button, which is the plus. Login because I'm on this page, it automatically senses that it's target. So it adds the name properly. And it asks me if I want to give it a password, generate a password, and that's the password. Wow. So I would never remember that. Um, and of course, I'll have to change it afterwards, which I think is what got me in trouble last time mm -hmm. with the... Uh, with the Macy's account, I will select the password. Do you need to put I your? Will... Sorry, what? I'm oh, sorry. Do you need to put your um, your username in? Um, it should autofill it. Okay. Tim, this is yep. Kath. I have a weird question. You've got all these accounts like Macy's and now Target. Is it like when you get too many store cards, it, it affects your credit? Um, no, it shouldn't. Because the cat, they're not credit, but they're just accounts. You're not asking yep. for a credit card from them. So that's how you create an account on Bitwarden. And then the next time I log in, it would be a similar process to how Macy's didn't pan out where it would um, give me the ability to just click on it once and it would add it. 
So that was basically just trying to show how you can use some of these, or at least one of these. Um, the honey is a little bit easier because it doesn't require any logging in or anything like that. But it's a lot of fun, as you can see. Um, and the password for Macy's has come in, so I'm just going to enter in a new password and Great. not have to deal with it in the future. All right, so I reset that. We're good. Great. So my back to inbox. So, I mean, there are a lot of extensions. Is there any type of extension anyone would like to learn about or um, go through any of these? Is there any extensions that people use that they'd want to recommend? I mean, if not, uh, I'm going to go into uBlock Origin. Okay. Uh, so uBlock Origin, one of the reasons I like it is it a lot of ad blockers, what they'll do is in order to make money, they will have a list of approved ads. So some ads will be let through anyway. Uh, uBlock doesn't really have that. Uh, the other reason I like it is it has over 10 million users, has a very favorable rating, has 24,000 rating or reviews. And if I click on reviews, all of the negative ones are either I can't block this specific thing, why can't I, like Google Doodles. I don't know who wants to block Google Doodles. And then um, there's some more negatives down here. There we go. Uh, this person says, everything is blocked. Um, first of all, I've shown you how to remove it. So if it's truly blocking everything, you can remove it. And you can also turn it off for any pages that you, um, you have an issue with. So I'll show you how to do that real quick. So add to Brave, add extension, give it five seconds, and now I have uBlock Origin. Now, once again, if we look on the top right-hand corner, uBlock Origin, uh, one, it doesn't have anything to block on this page, but uBlock Origin is now installed. So if I go to extensions, uBlock Origin, we're good. So if I go to New York Times, nope, I can see not as many ads as if, I probably should have done it before and after, mm -hmm. but um, you'll notice like there aren't any spanners on the side or anything like that with the ads. Um, the end, so uBlock versus AdBlock Plus. Um, extensions. AdBlock Plus. So AdBlock Plus also has 10,000 or 10 million plus users, has more ratings, but slightly, slightly less. Not that, not enough to be concerned about. So we'll go to reviews and five star, five star, one star. Great until they removed your consent for which sites to block ads. Now everything is blocked. That's not really an issue. You can turn off the extension. Seems to be blocking less ads over time. That's true. So let's see. Yep. So it talked about the two issues I have with AdBlock Plus. So the the two issues I have with AdBlock Plus, uh, and while it is a very good track, it is very good, um, and you should feel safe using it. This is one of the reasons. Acceptable ads automatically support websites you love. What this means is it doesn't block all ads, and it will actually replace ads with other ads. So you're still seeing ads on a lot of stuff. Um, and this is because it got bought out and kind of the way to monetize it was to whitelist some ads. 
the other reason I don't like it as much is it does require more resources than uBlock Origin. Uh, we have a question of, do these ad blocker extensions block unwanted email ads? And the answer is kind of. Um, your email will be blocking most of the email ads in terms of not showing you the ad. Um, it'll just kind of be blank or it'll say like, click here to download uh, pictures from this email so you can see it. Um, and it will block ads in your email if you need to click on something to open it up. It will block it. Uh, I don't believe uBlock Origin is available for Safari. I do think AdBlock Plus is available for Safari. Um, I don't know if it'll tell me in here. I'm just looking myself. No, so I'm not. Okay. I'm not seeing it uh, for Safari. Turn it off. Um, one thing you'll notice is if you block origin block something, just like in the other extensions, um, or it stops like a pop-up window, it'll pop up right here and you can actually click on it to turn it off. So if you're on a website and something isn't working, you can just turn off you block for that site uh, just to make sure you get the pop-up. All right, are there any, so Mary, uh, you checked and confirmed it wasn't available for right. Safari? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, um, and once again, it's it's very easy to get rid of these things. Just hit remove. And now my extension list is very bare bones and I no longer have an icon up here. But as you mentioned, Adblock Plus is available on Safari. Um, so that's good. One of my favorite browser extensions is Instapaper. Um, I don't know that. What this does is it allows you to take an article in a newspaper and you can save, you can just click on the browser and it will just grab the text without all of the the whole sort of outlay of the newspaper page. It's really wonderful just to be able to save um, articles like that without, you know, all uh, everything else that is on on the web page. And Mary, I think you did a class on Instapaper and Pocket. Right, exactly. Pocket's another opportunity. Yeah. So one thing you'll notice is this has less users than the other one we were looking at. Um, it has a fairly decent rating of 3.9 out of 5. And if I click on reviews, I can see that the main issue is some of the things aren't being saved. but I don't see anything about it stealing your information. So I'm okay with that. Also, oftentimes if you, if you see, sorry, if you see um, some negative one-star reviews, oftentimes mixed in with five-star reviews, sometimes people just don't know how to get it working in the first place. Uh, so be wary of that whenever there's a, a small number of reviews just check them and some of them may just say doesn't work. In my experience, that's kind of like whenever you go on Amazon and look at reviews and you see a bunch of people saying box came damaged and mm -hmm. give it one star. And it's kind of like, well, I want to know about the device, not about what the shipping company did to it. Um, so definitely just check reviews mm -hmm. just to be on the safer side. I did not know about the custom cursor. 
Oh, uh, yeah. You can make sketchy. it into a, yeah. your cursor into a pizza slice. I love it. I love it. I can see wasting a lot of time, but 6 million people are using it. Well, let's add it. I have no idea how to use it. Ooh. Why is why is it pizza and Joey? I have that's this is a really interesting view into a mindset. It's weird. I'm going to remove it. Yeah, please, please. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, I led you down that rabbit hole. Does, so does anyone have any questions or any, again, any browsers extensions that you use that you would like to share with the group? Mary, this is Kath. I'd like to know more about that Insta paper. Um, so you set up, basically, you, you put the browser extension on, and then you set up a, um, an Instapaper account. It's all free. Um, and when you, it's like clipping, it's just like, so you're in an article, you automatically, you hit the browser extension, it clips it, and it's, it asks you to sign into your account. You sign in, and it saves simply the text of the article. Um, sometimes it will have the, um, the images, sometimes it won't, but it won't have any of the ads, any of the other bits and pieces that you will see on the page. Um, and it's, it's just a really nice way to, if you're reading online uh, in a newspaper or a magazine and you just want that ad, I mean, that article, it's just a very simple way of, of grabbing it quickly. So. If, if you install an extension, um, once it's installed, is it inactive until you click on it to start it or is it automatically on unless you don't use it? Uh, that's a great question. Um, it's generally, so if we look at extensions, you can see it's automatically on this Instapaper that I just installed. However, it's not up here because I haven't signed into it. So it's active, but it's not doing anything until I create an account. Oh, I forgot. I actually need to put in a password. Doo -doo -doo. Not sure where I would put this in my database. Let's go to work. Okay. Instapaper seems like it's work. Here we go. I'm not a robot. Oh, please don't make me do this. Uh, crosswalks. <laughs> that one doesn't have a crosswalk, right? It doesn't look like it. Oh, I need to quick, keep clicking on stuff. That one looks like it has one. That one is one. All right, verify. Cool. All right. So Mary, if I go to just yeah, go to New York CNN. Times, yeah, or CNN, yep. Yeah. Okay, and then click on an article, and then oh god, okay. It's not liking me. No. Command shift S. Oh, you know what? Is that? It's a, a video. It, it's not a, a, right, a video. video. Not an article. Ah, well. Oh, it should, I mean.
Gotta be good. Yeah. Try the New York Times, because that's It's also possible Brave doesn't like it. Oh, that's true. I've never used it on Brave. Perfect. All right. I love it. <laughs> I'm going to get this to work. You're just, you're making all of us who grew up analog feel a lot better about ourselves, that's all. All right, so. Tim, this is yep. staff. Are you using the same password for all of your uh, extensions that you're putting in? Nope. That's the, the advantage of having Bitwarden. He doesn't, he doesn't have to remember any of his passwords. So you would, would you, Tim, you would recommend a different password for every different extension? Yes, I recommend a different password for everything. Okay. So now if you go to instapaper.com, you'll see that it will be listed. And there it is. Oh. Oh, it actually it saved just, the other one. It did save. It just didn't show you that oh, you signed oh. in. Okay. All right. Well, even when it wasn't working, it was working. Perfect. All right. And um, then if, just open it because I want to show them one thing because I think it's really helpful because it's it's simply the text and the images and not all of the, you know, it's very manageable and you can um, share it as a PDF. So it's very nice. Speed read. What's that? Yeah. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> Why is this a thing? I don't know. Because they can do it. No, I mean, so you it. can find a part of an article that was the part that interested you very quickly. Maybe. I feel like this is um, making me read faster or trying to by not having my eyes move. Mm. I think I read faster than this though. All right. So anyway, that's how Instapaper works. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, this is fabulous, Tim. So I'm hoping that all of you will go explore your extensions and report back on ones that you find and we'll share them. So um, I just did figure out why it looked like it wasn't working. OK. Um, if you click on the browser extension option, uh, you can see that I didn't have it pinned to my browser extensions up here. Oh, OK. So it wasn't saving it. So I couldn't just click on it and ah. get the saved icon. All right. Makes sense. So anyway, just to quickly recap, go you can go to your browser extensions by clicking on the hamburger menu, going to extensions, you'll see this page. Um, and then you can see what extensions you have installed. If you don't want one of them, you just hit remove, remove, and it goes away. If you want to install an extension, you go to the web store, search the store, and download it essentially and install it very quickly. So we're going to go back to Grammarly. Am I really bad at spelling Grammarly? It's it's not particularly gramma grammatical Grammarly. I'm just horrible at spelling Grammarly. It was up at the top literally the big banner, uh, you click on it, add extension, 
it gets added. Click on the pin so it shows up. And now Grammarly is active. And it will show up here. Great. Are there any questions on any particular extensions that I can uh, bumble through like I did with Instapaper or any questions on if it's safe or not or how to do anything? Because I realize sometimes I go through certain things quicker than would be useful for some people in order to see what's happening. All right. Well, I'm going to go clean out my extensions because I have a lot that I don't use. I should just get rid of them. Yep. And if you notice uh, your browser running a little bit slow, uh, just make sure you don't have a ton of extensions active because they do take up resources. All right, we have a question. Are extensions updated automatically? They are. So if you go to the web store, um, one, it will automatically update your extensions if you close and open your browser. So if I were to close Brave right now, it would do a check. Well, it would do a check while Brave is open to see if any extensions needs to be updated. And whenever I close it and reopen it, it would update the extension. The other thing you can see, um, and probably a safety thing I should have added, is you want to use extensions that are recently updated. So if an extension was last updated in like 2019, it's pretty clear that the extension isn't getting love, it isn't getting improved. Um, and any security issues that were found between, you know, in the last two years wouldn't have gotten fixed. So this one is updated March 15th, 2021. That was yesterday. So we're good. But yes, extensions are essentially updated automatically as long as you close and open your browser. OK, everyone. Well, thank you, Tim. Um, we will send out the recording and the slides uh, probably tomorrow. And uh, thank you, everyone, for participating. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.